for our first comedian. He's a dude from Pittsburgh. Just take a little bit of bass out. I want it. Also, do you do you have Kendrick Lamar playing like real quietly? Is that, I thought it was a car outside, and I was like, what the shit? Are they getting? All right. Okay. Now that we got that out of the way, if y'all would do me a big favor and put your hands together for our first comedian from Pittsburgh, North Carolina, Nate Bacon, everybody. How's it going, Reanimator Records? Good. Good. Good to hear, man. Anybody here think it's weird that some mannequins have nipples? I was at a department store the other day, staring at a mannequin, because that's not illegal. And there was this mannequin that had, like, nipples, and it was like, it was cold in there. Like, but the thing didn't have a head, so I, didn't, I was wondering how anatomically correct they were trying to be. Like, is that really helping with the sale? Yeah, that pressure looks good. But how's it gonna look on my nipples? <laughs> it's awfully cold in the boardroom. I don't want to have an embarrassing nipple-related blowout on my new dress shirt. You gotta do your due diligence. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's smart. You don't want to lose the Johnson account because you popped a button because you got your little nipples get a little hard. I don't know. This joke needs more work, obviously. Being a comedian is fun, but that's not my dream job. My dream job is to be a bike cop. Isn't that like the best, like, you get all the power and authority and you get to wear, like, Lycra to work? It's gotta be a fucking sweet deal, man. But bike cops, they don't ever get to do, like, you never see like, anybody on a Schwinn riding up to like, a murder case. It's always like the fucking softball stuff, you know? Like, you always see bike cops, like, getting home with people off benches. And I think it's because they're like kindred spirits, you know? Like, alright buddy, you don't have a home, I don't have the respect of my peers, you're sleeping on a bench, my wife hasn't slept with me in nine years, like, can we help each other out on this one? Come on! Because you couldn't, like, have a cop, a bike cop doing, like, real cop stuff. Like, imagine getting pulled over in your car by a bike cop. Like, I think it would be just a brag, you know? Like, you know how fast you're going? I don't know, 20, 25? Am I, is that illegal? He's like, no. But I bet you're impressed I can keep up with you, right? Like, Ben down your side of a mirror trying to show off his calf muscles. It's like, oh yeah. Being a cop is a career. Being a bicyclist is a lifestyle. Am I free to go? Like, even if they, like, you got arrested by a bike cop, that's gotta be humiliating. You got like call in the paddy wagon, it's just another cop on a tandem bicycle. <laughs> so not only are you going to jail for like public urination, you gotta ride yourself to jail. they will tack on resisting arrest if you don't help them pedal up a steep hill. It's bullshit, man. Be fun though. Cause like I think like you ever see like a nineties cop show where like a cop shoots a kid and then the chief embarrasses him by making him work a desk job? Like, how many kids does this guy shoot that he's got to wear a fucking fanny pack to work now? <laughs> you know? You kind of lose all your authority when you're trying to taste somebody and you got to fumble with a zipper. It's like, stop, stop, you're in <laughs> That joke needs work, too. They both need work. I don't like dudes that wear cargo shorts. Like, that's a personal. I just hate the implication that you need more pockets than I do. Which is kind of bullshit, man. Like, I work 40 hours a week, and I can get away with the amount of pockets Levi Strauss thinks I need. But you see this guy wearing a soul patch at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, a fucking Chipotle, and he's got all this extra cargo space? I don't believe it. It's bullshit. This is like the term cargo. What are they hauling, you know? I never considered a dime bag and a hacky sack precious cargo. Like, I'm not a doctor, but I think you can get away with one pocket to carry your harmonica in. You're not the goddamn lead singer of Blues Traveler and you need a harmonica in every fucking key, okay? You can ruin people's good times with just one harmonica. Nice, man. Um, Alright, I'll end with this. A friend of mine, we're talking and he's like, Nate, if you ever find a girl who put a finger in your ass without asking, you marry her immediately. Little did he know, I already knew this advice. 
That's why for the last three years, I've been carrying an engagement ring in my asshole for the constant. <laughs> <laughs> so when the moment, when I find that perfect girl, I'll have the perfect engagement proposal. <laughs> we'll be getting frisky. She'll give me the little Jack Horner, you know, sticking the thumb, pull out the plums. She'll be like, you like that, baby? And I'll be like, yeah, it feels great. Why don't you try the ring finger? Um, okay. What? Oh my god, what is this? Oh my god, I thought you'd ask. Yes, of course, yes. Oh my god, a thousand times, yes, I have to call my mom. Oh my god, you're the love of my life. That'd be the, it'd be the perfectly unique engagement, because it's the only engagement that you have to get up onto one knee to propose. That's right. You guys like that one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.